Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, very honored to be here among you today. My name is Daria Safai. I grew up in the religious dictatorship of Islamic Republic of Iran. Mine and many of my generations is a bitter story of discrimination and oppression under the veil of Sharia. As if the wings we used to have have been clipped to make sure that we would never be able to spread them and fly away. Today, I am here to talk about the Iranian women, the situation of Iranian women. Women who were on their way toward equality to men. Women who were more competent, brilliant, and advanced than ever. After the revolution of 79, these women suddenly became inferior creatures. They account for half of the Iran's populations and they are victimized by the gender discrimination. Allow me to tell you my story like that. You can see more about my life and that of my generation. The first time I was confronted with uh, that sort of discrimination was when I was six years old, uh, the first day of uh, school, and I was uh, on my way to go for the beginning of the school, when suddenly I had to wear a veil uh, dark, large cloak, and a trousers underneath. Of course, I didn't find my clothes beauty. I had much more better than that. But one day, it was the time to change the code of dress. And what saddened me most was the moment that I saw our neighbor boy, uh, who was also on his way to school, and I, I saw him he had the same clothes as the day before. So as a girl of six, I knew that my life is changing, but he, his life stayed the same. At another time, while I was playing at the playground with my girlfriends, suddenly I had to laugh out very loudly. I was a girl like nine years old, and I saw our uh, director of the school came to us very angry and talked like, uh, how dare you laugh that loudly? It does not suit a girl. You cannot laugh that loudly. I felt deeply ashamed and guilty for having done something utterly wrong. So my code of conduct changed as well. And like that, we as girls, contrary to boys, we were not allowed to buy a ride a bicycle or, or to go swimming. Because of all these restrictions, I really didn't like to be a girl. I didn't want to be different from a boy, and even I felt ashamed for being a girl. As I grew up, I started asking myself more questions like, why do only women have to cover themselves? For me, feeling the sun and the wind touch my hair was the pinnacle of joy, especially in the hot summer. Life of women in the Islamic Republic of, Is of Iran is imbued with discrimination under the veil of Sharia law. The hijab is mandatory. A woman is not allowed to work, study, or travel without the her husband's permission. A woman can't divorce, only on exceptional conditions. After a divorce, a woman can't get the custody over her children. The children goes automatically to the husband. And even if the husband dies, it goes to the family of the husband. Women inherit half of a man. And in the court, the testimonies of women have the half of value of the testimonies of men. And all this while individual and social freedom of Iranian society before the revolution had never been limited. That makes it difficult for women to accept these regulations now. 
Am I graduating at Tehran University in 1999, a student manifestation had broke out. People were more than fed up with the blatant limitations of freedom and daily violation of human rights. This student manifestation resulted in a widely supported protest movement against the regime. My husband and I actively participated in these student protests. We constantly lived in fear and were permanently under observation, but we still cherish the hope and believe that we can change everything if we just continue to do that. However, the regime retaliated, and protests, of course, did not go unanswered. Like myself, many people wound up in prison. My husband had fled. Until today, any form of protest is still violently nipped in the bob by the regime. People sometimes point out to me that for Iranian women, things must have changed for the better under President Rouhani. That could not be less true. Let me tell you about some new limitations for Iranian women. Under President Rouhani, in the past two years, the religious police opened more than three million files on women who do not live, who do not live up to regulation regarding clothing. Between March and November 2015, more than 40,000 cars were confiscated because the female drivers or passengers didn't wear their hijab properly. These numbers clearly show that Iranian women don't want to live the way the government prescribes. University have now introduced quota to limit the amount of girls. Girls used to constitute 67% of all students, but now their enrollment is limited to 50%. And all of this while there are no limitations for men. There are also new limitations regarding music concerts. Female musicians who had already been banned from singing now even can't play an instrument anymore. Every concert with female musicians is getting canceled. In other words, the situation is not improving, it's just getting worse. The discrimination of Iranian women is also being carried forward into the sports arena. Women are being restricted in practicing sports under the pretext of them having to wear bothersome clothing. As if this is not enough, female fans are being targeted as well. Some are even serving a jail sentence because they wanted to attend a game. To make it even worse, all this happens under the supervision of the international sports federations. In the Asian Volleyball Championship, which was held in October 2012 in Tehran, about a third of the spectators in the Azadi Stadium, with a current capacity of 12,000 people, were women. But now, it has been three years that Iranian women do not even have the right to attend the national volleyball team competitions as a spectators. From the day the stadium ban was implemented, women have made numerous attempts to protest against this ban. Offside, an Iranian film directed by Jafar Panahi, who has been banned from filmmaking, shows some of these efforts. There have also been widely organized efforts against gender discrimination in sport outside Iran. I founded the Let Iranian Women Enter Their Stadiums campaign, and I have also participated with my campaign in these efforts alongside some former Iranian and American female sport champions and other female activists from all around the world. We went to Sweden. USA, Belgium, Italy, Poland, and some other countries with our message, let Iranian women enter their stadiums on t-shirts and banners. 
Thanks to our actions, I have had contact at the highest echelons of FIFA and FIVB to bring up the issue. But we still observe that the government of Rouhani neglects the right of women to enter a stadium. During the FIVB World League Games in Tehran in June 2015, they didn't sell tickets for women, and security forces took up positions in a large area around the stadium, inspected approaching cars at checkpoints, and diverted women away, even when they were leaving close to the stadium, only to prevent protests of women who were denied access to the stadium despite earlier promises that they could attend these games. To exercise and watch sport events are the basic rights of every citizen, regardless of gender or race. The fact that all women, except for Iranian, can attend stadium inside Iran is a great insult to Iranian women. Yes, foreign women can attend stadium inside Iran. The Iranian and Saudi Arabian women are the only women throughout the world who are prevented from entering stadiums, with the difference that Iranian women have had the right for several generations and have enjoyed it. Today, the sports arena has become a major place for women's civil campaigns. The volleyball arenas are the front line of women's campaigns against gender discrimination. Iranian women need support from democratic countries and international organizations. No society can develop as long as systematic discrimination of women as rule rather than exception. Regarding the problems of extreme Islamism the world is facing nowadays, it is even more important to support women who fight against this discrimination. The fight for equal rights corrodes Islamism to the core of its existence and will eventually overthrow it because equal rights for women are incompatible with an Islamic state structure. A fight for women's rights is a fight against extremism, better and more efficient than any army. I am confident that the fight for women's rights in Islamic countries and beyond can halt the lethal spiral of violence. If women win, the whole society wins. Thank you for your attention. And it is just the time for a video, just short video of our campaign, what we have done all around the world. Thank you.